Good afternoon. I have with me um, our council members, uh, our chairman, Councilman Ricky Template, Councilman Marion Edwards, Councilman um, Scott Walker, Councilwoman Jennifer Van Rankin, Councilman Dino Bonanno, as well as Dr. Cade Brumley, who, Brumley, who is the superintendent of our school systems, Dr. Jerry Satanovich, Joe Valiente, who is the director of our, of our emergency operations, um, as well as our, our deputy and chief operating officers here today. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Um, today, Governor John Bell Edwards signed a proclamation that halts any gathering of more than 250 people until Monday, April 13th. This also, this proclamation also closed all kindergarten through 12th grade public schools statewide until Monday, April 13th. Um, at this moment, we have 36 presumptive positive cases related to um, non-travel. And the difference there is that as these cases started coming down, we realized that they were community transmission, which is the reason why we have very aggressive measures that you're gonna see in our parish and at the state. Um, testing will become more available, and as testing becomes more available, we should have every expectation to see these counts rise. Um, as we know, 80 to 85 percent of these cases are mild, and that will require uh, no medical attention, not necessary to go to your doctor, not necessary to be hospitalized. But 15 to 20 percent of these cases can be quite severe, and of those cases, our most vulnerable populations is that the elderly and those with chronic, underlying chronic diseases. So the theory is about flattening the curve, that when we, you study this across countries, when you study this at the cities in the United States, you expect to see a very large peak of cases. And if you can reduce that peak and lower that peak and flatten that curve out, your limited medical resources, your limited hospital beds, the, the staffing is able to keep up with the demand and that we are able to truly have um, hospital beds, nursing staff, doctors to our, to our sickest patients. So the key is to lengthen this, um, this virus coming into our community and lower the peak. And if you can do that at the front end very aggressively, um, you are able to minimize um, certainly um, the critical cases in our community. And that is what you see us doing along with these proclamations um, to flatten the curve and slow the spread. So again, we are in the mitigation phase. As a parish government, we believe that it is very critical now more than ever that our critical government services continue as much as possible, our water department, our road department, those things of that nature that the community relies on us to provide consistently no matter what the situation. So that's why we are taking proactive measures to limit the amount of public activities and essentially limit the amount of unnecessary public activity that our employees will have to endure. Um, we certainly don't want key managers getting sick and then we have to quarantine them. So as we are now, this is the reason for these measures. All Jefferson Parish permitted social activities, regardless of size, are suspended until further notice. All Jefferson Parish recreational department activities will also be suspended until further notice. All non-essential and social senior activities in Jefferson Parish are suspended until further notice. However, the essential activities of Jefferson Parish will continue, including food distribution service. David, can you, that's in my, that's in my, um, <laughs> my own phone, sorry, I'm disturbing myself. Um, and all non-essential activities at Jefferson Parish facilities will be canceled and postponed until fur further notice. So programs at our Jefferson Parish libraries, our Jefferson Parish animal shelters, Elario Center, our Performing Arts Society. All non-essential programming at Jefferson Parish Community Centers, Senior Centers, Head Start Centers are suspended until further notice. And note that essential services, including food distri distribution, as, as I said, will continue. And there will be limited public access to our Jefferson government facilities. We are open. 
our departments are open. Many of our departments that have the suspended program programming activities will be reassigned to help other departments, but we want to limit the public interaction that we have. Um, so again, we are not closing, we are opening, but behind the scenes, our staff, we will be reassigning people, we will be looking at flex time, we will be um, looking at um, operating in, in larger facilities so we can engage in those social distancing practices that we know are very critical. Our Jefferson Parish Transit Department will continue service and is uh, working alongside, tra alongside TransDev and health and security officials as well as industry leaders for updates and best practices regarding the coronavirus. So um, that includes daily cleaning of all of our buses and our transit vehicles. Um, and again, we want to remind people that the best way we as a community, and I do see this as every citizen's obligation to participate in these methods, is to stay home if you are sick. It's to engage in those personal behaviors um, to limit and minimize the spread of this disease. Covering your cough, not touching your face. Again, staying home when you are sick. The social distancing measures that we need. Um, wiping down frequently touched surfaces. And, and ensuring that those materials are used to the fullest extent possible. So when you have that Clorox wipe, wipe it until it's dry. Wipe it against all of your doorknobs, all of your handles, all of your surfaces. Make sure you lengthen the use of those things. We are still living life in this community. Of course, our, our restaurants are open, our shopping malls are open, our grocery stores are open. Um, but life is just gonna be altered somewhat with these large gatherings and with unnecessary social gatherings for the next um, few weeks to get ahead of this, like we can see so many communities did not. And it's very clear that the countries and the communities that were very aggressive at the forefront had better results um, at the end of the day with this virus. Um, I have here um, other, uh, Dr. Cade Brumley is here and I would like to invite him up because I know um, they were major changes today with our school system and I wanna assure everyone I have been in communication with our school officials, I have been in communication with um, our local health care pro providers, all of our major um, systems, um, our mayors, so the best way we can combat this is a lot of coordination between all of the sectors of our community. I was in touch with our, our chamber, our Jefferson Business Council, um, JEDCO, Every sector of our community working together on this um, is the best way we as a community are gonna be able to get through this with the minim minimal amount of severe cases and letting our medical personnel um, last as long as possible to as many people as possible. Um, we are gonna look at creative ways. I have already reached out to um, some of our hospitals that were concerned about healthcare. Um, we have facilities if they need to use that, if we need to be creative. And I know Dr. Brumley and I have talked many times about creative government and helping one another and, and pivoting and, and turning those facilities to other uses that we need in this community. Um, all the different things that might need to happen, we probably haven't even had a chance to think of yet. Our council's already been discussing a lot on the measures that they, they need to take in ensuring that there's as much public access to their votes, but also as minimal public interaction um, as possible. So all of us have been working behind the scenes um, to really come together as a community. And I would like to invite Dr. Brumley up because there was so many, um, so many things happening at the school today. Uh, thanks, President Lee Sheen. Uh, you've done an outstanding job coordinating efforts across the parish so far. So in terms of the public school system, largest school system in the state of Louisiana with almost 51,000 kids, um, we decided very early on to try and take a lead uh, in this effort to uh, prevent the spread of coronavirus, not only through our school, but through the uh, community. Uh, we were very pleased with the steady efforts that, that we took through this process, trying to keep our doors open uh, as long as possible. Uh, because we know that families depend on us uh, to be open every day. Uh, specifically, we also know that hospital uh, officials, uh, medical uh, care providers, uh, they need to be at work every day. And so in order to be at work, uh, their kids need to be at school. Uh, we also knew that if we close the doors to our schools, uh, oftentimes when school is out of session, 
um, parents often send their kids to grandpa and grandma, and that's exactly where we did not want them uh, to send their kids. And so uh, we worked for some time to keep the doors open, always realizing it's an evolving situation, and at any point we could have to make a shift or a change. And so uh, when the governor made the declaration today, we know that he did not take that uh, lightly. We know that he had good sound advice to make those decisions, and we fully support that uh, decision. Uh, at this point, moving forward, I think what's most important for us is that we go into our schools uh, and provide additional sanitation efforts in, in those buildings, uh, also knowing that some of our most vulnerable uh, students are, uh, will still need meals uh, during the day. So we're working right now to determine how we might best provide meals to our students while they're not physically at our space. Uh, that will most likely be a, a grab and go type option uh, once we get those logistics uh, uh, more fully uh, defined. Uh, we're also very concerned about student learning uh, during this period of time, and so we, we will open a, a, a suite of options online for our students to participate in, uh, but we recognize that only about 50% of our student body uh, have access to internet um, or technological devices at their home, so we recognize we'll have to have a paper-based uh, component of that as well. We are developing that. We've been working on that for some time, and we hope to go live with that probably within the next week to support um, our families. Families. One of the things that I'll be asking my board to do tonight at a 6 p.m. special session is to declare a state of emergency for the school system as well, which will give me a little more flexibility over the next month to make needed decisions in the best interest of the parish. Uh, also, we're very concerned at this point with ensuring that individuals that provide medical care will have child care, individuals in law enforcement, uh, individuals in emergency personnel roles are, across the board. So we're thinking through ideas at this point on how we might can support child care uh, for, for essential roles within our community. Um, and we have um, Dr. Jerry Satanovich here. If you, do you, I know you were on a lot of conference calls today, so if you would like to share some of that information. Sure. Um, yeah, first, as a healthcare professional, I'd like to say how pleased I am with the seriousness that all levels of government are taking this crisis. Um, before I came here this afternoon, I was at one of the three Oshner locations at the Urgent Cares that are um, uh, you know, doing uh, uh, testing for COVID-19. And based on my experience here this afternoon, I want to make a point to everybody in the community. If you think you've been exposed and have a question that you need to be tested, please, don't, if you can, do not just show up at either a doctor's office or at one of these centers. The, you know, the centers are overrun. And what's unbelievably frustrating for the community and for our staff is for somebody to be there, wait hours, to go in and think they get tested, get interviewed, and find out that they don't meet the criteria at this point. So I strongly recommend a call to your provider or a telemedicine visit uh, before, you know, if you think that you're uh, affected. As Dr. Satanovich said, we want to support our medical providers as much as possible. They are on the front line of this. Um, in a lot of the conversations we had yesterday, um, requesting a test, you just can't go to your doctor and request a test. So um, first of all, if you start developing symptoms, please call your doctor ahead of time. So they're prepared for your visit. They can protect their staff. They can clear, bring you in in a back room. You're not, you're not uh, coming into the patient waiting room. Also, before you have symptoms, um, and even if you are positive for this virus and you, you don't have symptoms yet and you are tested, it's, gonna, it, it's a lot of false negatives coming up there. So it, it's a, a false sense of security to try to get tested before you have symptoms because um, the test will not reveal itself until, um, until some, a little bit of time. So asymptomatic requesting a test, um, you cannot rely on that result. So um, I'm happy to open it up to any questions that you may have. Um, Anything? Yes. Um, are you aware of any private schools that are going to be remaining open in Jefferson Parish? So I know um, the um, the archdiocese. What is the latest on the archdiocese? They closed. I don't know the date. And again, this is how quickly this information is coming. I mean, Joe Valiente, you know, uh, who is the head of our emergency operations centers. This is like five cat storms coming at us in multiple times. I have the nature of the information that is. And, and hour by hour changing is so critical that, um, so we, we do know that the archdiocese is closing as well, and then independent schools certainly um, will, be, we, will be closing as well. Okay? Yes. What about public school teachers? 
teachers? Are they coming toward <laughs> So immediately, uh, teachers will uh, not be coming to work because we need time to go into the facilities and provide proper sanitation. Uh, once we get once we get past that, we will be uh, building a schedule, or we will be building a schedule to bring uh, staff back into the facility. Uh, that will be important because, as I said, we'll be delivering uh, both online and paper-based instruction to students as, as we move forward. One of the reasons I'm calling the, the uh, special session of our board tonight is to get our board to authorize uh, pay for our employees as we move through this process. Uh, and so we feel really good about still being able to do that for our employees. Essentially, the decision we're making in the parish is any non-essential activity where we are bringing people together, we're not going to do. We're not going to take on the extra risk. I'll have employees there that don't need to be with the public that I'm exposing. They're, they come back to the government building. So it really is just that one question. Do we need to gather these people together? Our concern is making sure the essential staff, my, my, the, the water supervisors and those people in public works and those people who are providing services to our, our, our most vulnerable people remain healthy and unexposed to this virus. So anything that is not needed to be done, we do not want them gathering in a public building. And that is essentially the crux of our decision making. Yes. We're still waiting to determine what the council meetings. We have a few weeks before our next council meeting, so we're waiting to determine that. Certainly, they will all have, you know, discussions about when you have a council meeting, you're bringing everybody together in the chamber. And again, these were the nature of the discussions that the council members were having this morning. And, you know, they're trying to balance um, making sure that everybody has a say-so in the vote that they're taking, but not bringing those people together. So you will be seeing very creative things coming from our council members using perhaps video conferencing for some of their group gatherings. They really want to keep their public informed, their constituents informed, but also fall in line with these, these measures that the governor and, and the president want us to do. So we have not figured